Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. And guess what? Today we have another return visit from one of our favourite writers, Ram V. This time to talk about um, his uh, Boom Studios book that uh, he's creating with uh, Felipe Andrade. You can you can order the book I'm about to name, the first collection, from the links attached to this conversation. And it is, of course, The Many Deaths of Layla Starr. How are you today, mate? Yeah, doing well. Uh, how are you? I'm good, thanks, man. I'm good, yeah. And uh, looking forward to hearing about the uh, the genesis of this book, which I, I can tell from off the page that you guys are having a lot of fun creating. Yeah, no, um, it was, in terms of the genesis of the idea, uh, I probably had this idea long before I even considered becoming a writer. Um, and it's just been, it's just this thing that's been rattling around in my head for, for quite some time. And, and Indian mythological stories have a long tradition of the idea of, of the god of death coming down to, to, to mix it up with the mortals for a while, if you will. Yeah. Um, and so that was really the start of, of this, this story that I wanted to tell. Um, but I wanted to flip it around and, and it's always, you know, human beings learning of death by meeting the God, whereas I wanted to do a God learning what it means to be human by, by meeting, uh, the people that she so unflinchingly called for, for years as part of her job, if you will. Um, so yeah, that was really the, the the high concept of the book, if you will. And it was 2018 in San Diego when, when I was talking to Eric Harburn, who's the editor of it, boom. Um, and he said, hey, I want something India, Mumbai based, like you've done before with Graffiti's Wall and, and, and Black Mumba, um, but with some fantastical elements uh, added onto it. And then I, I knew at, even at the time I said how I had this idea about the god of death coming down to, to, to meet mortals. Um, and, you know, after I went back, I sent him a, a one page pitch. He, he loved it. We, we developed it a little bit further. Um, we, we discussed the idea that it was going to be individual stories that would essentially stand by themselves, but also have a larger bigger picture narrative running through all of them and then i knew even at that point that i wanted to tell a story that spanned the lifetime of one character so issue one starts with one of the characters as a baby and issue two issue um five ends with uh him you know having lived his life yeah yeah and this first collection collects uh, issue issues one to five um, yeah, I mean, it is it is a it is a one shot that like it's yeah. done. The story yeah. is done. So yeah, yeah. So 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 that's a, that's that's your beginning, your middle, and your end right there. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I, how did you how did you come to work with how did you come to work with Andrade? Yeah. Um. Once I had sent over this pitch, Eric was like, you know, we should we should try and figure out an artist who who was well suited for the book, and I had a. I had an idea in my head of what I wanted this to, to feel like. Um, I wanted it to feel like, have the playfulness of, of a Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba comic. Uh, I wanted it to have an innocence to all of it, even though we were talking about death and, and life and death as, as philosophical constructs. I wanted it to almost have a childlike innocence about it. Uh, and and when Eric shared Philippe's work, I, I kid you not, my reaction was, this is the guy, Eric, we have to get this guy. Uh, and, and Eric went back and talked to Philippe and Philippe said he was interested. Uh, and, and since then I've gotten to know Philippe as an artist and a creator. And um, I, can, I can truly say that uh, there is a camaraderie and, and, a, and a, a brotherhood there. I think we, we a lot of, influences for us are similar. Um, Philippe comes from, from Portugal uh, and one of, the, one of the influences behind the way this book is written is Jose Saramago, who's a Portuguese writer, uh, very famous for having written a novel called Death Interrupted. Uh, and so there's some very direct influences there. And the moment I said that, Philippe was like, oh, suddenly everything makes sense now in this book. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I think I think uh, although we came together by by chance, uh, I can't envision this book being what it is uh, if it weren't for Philippe. 
I, I think his work uh, has, uh, has, I don't know if you, this is going to make sense to you, but I think it's got an amazing quality of stillness about it, actually. So so I, I really find it quite, um, uh, almost quite hypnotic to look at. It's the same emotion I get sometimes when you see certain frames in a Wes Anderson movie. You know, you'd be watching yeah, yeah. so beautifully composed all the time. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, and I think it is, it is to Philippe's credit, that he can take, because his line work is actually very energetic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But he, so it is not a stillness that feels artificial. No. Um, which I would say, like a Wes Anderson film, very much is. It, it everything feels constructed. Yeah. But but with Philippe, it's a stillness that feels like trying to trying to capture a moment, like like that feeling of being on a beach and looking out at the waves. Everything is moving, but still, there is a stillness to that yeah. to that moment, and I think he captures that really well. Yeah, no, I, I think that's exactly right. I, I, it's a spiritual uh, stillness rather than a kind of, you know, a, a, a physical one per se. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just that sense of uh, I, I, what he has is that, and and every now and again, you 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 look at the work of a great artist who can do this. They can change your mood just from the visuals that yeah, are on yeah. the page, and and. and he can transmit to you the essence of a character through one casual gesture. Like the, the, the way in which a character pouts with their lower lip out and the fringe falls over, like that tells you everything you need to know about the character. And so it makes my job so easy because I have to do very little to, to explain to people who the inner workings of a person because Philippe does that so well through through the visual side of things. Yeah, right on. Absolutely. So for anybody watching this, um, I, I've had the privilege of talking to Ram V about the many deaths of Layla Starr, which is a, a really rather special and beautiful book. And the great thing about it is, which we touched upon earlier, is if you buy it from the links attached to this conversation, you're getting the whole thing. You're getting a wonderful story of a beginning, a middle, and an end, and uh, and and it's something in and of itself. And well done, mate, because I think it's uh, another great piece of work from you. Yeah, it's been on. It's it's just getting to be that time of year, so it's uh, going on a lot of multiple best of the year lists, uh, which is really nice to see. Um, but but more so. I've had messages from readers going like, oh, this book made me cry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm a 50 year old man. I haven't cried in a long time. Uh, you know, I always, making people cry is always a sense of personal achievement to me as a writer. So. <laughs> no, quite rightly so. I, I mean, I, I'll tell you, mate, this is, uh, as we're recording this, uh, we're, it, I, we're on the run up to uh, Christmas 2022. Yeah. And it may go out just after Christmas 2022, but we're on the run up. Yeah. And um, my uh, daughter in law, my, uh, my, my son's partner, she actually has this book from me in her Christmas stocking. Because uh, oh, so, so the, there's no finer accolade I could pay, I could pay than this is the book that this year I'm giving out to everybody as gifts, particularly of the comic book adjacent. You know, people are like, well, I've always liked comics, but you know, yeah. I, I, yeah. Think, I think work like this serve so many purposes in addition to just being a brilliant piece of entertainment it's just it's just a very clear example of what comics can do that's yeah. not about people running around you know with big leagues of big muscular people by their side yeah yeah no i i completely agree uh, and it's part of the reason my creator on work tends to be of an entirely different flavor yeah. from from when i do superhero stuff and again, when, think, you, when you're on the other day, that's what we were talking about, is the fact that your career just flips so easily between the two. And I know it's not an easy process, but you, you make it look... Yeah, easy. but, but it, it's... That's where, that's where the joy is for me in, in being able to go like, okay, I've written big burly guy in a cape going out at night and punching a few people. And I found what I wanted to say with that. And I found my philosophical angle, my, my, my lean into that. And now that I'm done with that, I can also take, you know, the story of a person who cobbles shoes on 
the street corner in Mumbai and, and tell an equally, hopefully equally impactful, equally impressive story of just the, the joy and magic of being a regular everyday human being. Well, well said. And, and, you know, if you get it right, there's no finer joy than that. And I think I think that in itself is a very positive message in the time where we're struggling to find positivity every day. And uh, I, I think I think it's in, it, I think it's important to hove into those very key truths about life and, you know, remind ourselves of uh, the, and again, you delivered it in a way that that message or that exploration is made through experiencing a beautiful piece of art. So yeah. I think that there's no better way to do it, mate. Yeah, I mean, I'm reminded of uh, George Saunders' quote, uh, man I tremendously respect, I love his stories. And he says, sometimes it's important to, to get up, go outside, look at the world and realize it is just as beautiful as it was when you were eight. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's important for me to, to, to be able to remember that when I write my stories. Me too, brother. And I think that is a beautifully uh, expressed sentiment and a great point at which to say, um, I've been privileged to be chatting with Ram V. We've been talking about the beautiful Many Deaths of Layla Star, which you can order from the links attached to this conversation. It's always good to have you on, mate. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll be back here very soon. Well, take care. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators. Subscribe right here. See you soon.